A new plan in the works to assist thousands of Barbadians affected by water shortages. The island of Abaco in the Bahamas battered by Hurricane Dorian. And coming up in sports, the Wendy's with an unlikely target of winning the second test against India. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC News Night, starting now. This segment of Weekend News Night, brought to you by Sajakor, wise financial thinking for life. Good evening, I'm Shane Jones, leading the news at 7. There's a major plan underway to help hundreds of Barbadians who are living in higher elevations and experiencing water woes. During the second annual Ermi Bourne lecture last night at the Aline School, Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley revealed that government had made a discovery that could bring long-awaited relief to those residents. We discovered that the Barbados Water Authority continues to pay for water at Groves in St. Philip that it does not fully use because the last government negotiated a take or pay contract. But it is important that we use that water because we're paying for it already. And to that extent, therefore, we have agreed in principle to fund a capital works program that will be dedicated to deliver water to the lower elevations of the East Coast such that that water being delivered now at Golden Ridge, Bowmanston and Hampton to both low and high elevations can be reserved for purely the higher elevations in St. Joseph, St. Andrew, St. Lucy. Prime Minister Motley says the 12-month plan will cost around $15 million. We will put in a new pumping house at Vineyard that we will have to build a new reservoir, complete new reservoir at Stuart Hill, that we will have to run pipe from Stuart Hill to the East Coast to ensure access to water for persons on the East Coast, and that we will have equally to address the problem from the North as well. And that if we can therefore supply the water to the East Coast of the country, we can guarantee that we can reserve and preserve the water at Golden Ridge, at Hampton and at Bowmanston for the northern elevations, while at the same time addressing an additional source of water in the north, which we are working on. Well, the Ermi Bourne Memorial Lecture was delivered by Senator Lisa Cummins, who told the audience the stories of our nation need to be told. The evening was decorated with the sights and sounds of St. Andrew. From the beautiful music of the Aline School Orchestra directed by Kevin Moore to the St. Andrew Dancers. Parish Ambassadors Diamond Payne and Damon Boyce were also a part of the program along with selections from the Bajan Green Band. Keynote speaker Senator Lisa Cummins says it is critical for Barbadians to know the stories of those who have helped make the country what it is. It is a part of us saying to our young people today, this is how we have come this far and this is where we are going next. But a road to get here has not been easy. And these are the things that we are able to see accomplished in our communities because of the legacy of those like Ermi Bourne. Many of us don't know that we are descended from strong stock. When you hear about the legacy of Dame Ermi and many others. Senator Cummins admitted that she too didn't always know the story of Dame Ermi. I, like many others, only knew the Dame Ermi Bourne Highway as the East Coast Road. I never knew the why of the naming. And I never knew that she walked the length and the breadth of the parish of St. Andrew, advocating for the voiceless, championing a cause for those that without her presence would have been invisible, speaking on behalf of the landless, and elevating issues like poverty, social exclusion, disenfranchisement to the front of the table and to the front of the national discourse in a way that would not have been the case had not she not done what she did. Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley agreed Barbadian stories must be told and commended St. Andrew MP George Payne for carrying the torch in that respect. That is why I want to commend George, you as Member of Parliament, for not only understanding the importance of preserving Ermi Bourne's legacy, but for championing the cause of wanting to establish a museum in this parish, which this government has already agreed to, and which indeed 
you have started the process with the negotiations on the land with respect to the acquisition of the property for the establishment of that university. Darwin Goodrich was presented with the Army Born Medal of Honor. Barbados is losing vital elements of its culture, history, and ways of life with the death of its elderly citizens. A Minister of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs, Cynthia Ford, wants the country to improve on intergenerational linkages. She made the plea at a church service to mark the 39th anniversary of the National Assistance Board. Today also marks the official start of Senior Citizens Month. The elderly have the potential to be a more to be a more powerful basis for future development, as we all know. This enables society to rely increasingly on the skills, experience, and wisdom of older persons, not only to take the lead in ameliorating their own socioeconomic circumstances, but also to participate actively in the society as a whole. When we speak of skills, ladies and gentlemen, we can consider building skills based from their past experiences and use them as fora or stepping stones to bridge the generation gaps that seemingly exist. A new member has been added to the local Centenarian Club. John Foster actually celebrated his 100th birthday on Friday, but yesterday he was joined by family and friends over at the Savannah Hotel to toast the milestone. Mr. Foster has five sons and ten great-grandchildren. One of those sons, Orson, shared some of the lessons his father taught him over the years. He's taught me to be mindful of what I do, to be caring about people, and also only not to be a spendthrift. You use what you, you need and not what you think you want. And he's instilled a lot of discipline in us over the years. Mr. Foster was originally from Belle Plaine, St. Andrew, before moving to St. John back in 1955. He still lives there to this day. Now, the former Allen School and Harrison College student told us a bit about his past, including his secret to living to a ripe old age. I became an apprentice at a drugstore in Baxter Road, Smith Brothers. I remained there for a year and a half, and that business closed off. And then I joined the health department and served for 40 years. Went here as a chief serving in the north and the city of St. Michael. We used to do plenty of exercising. We even uh, did weightlifting. I think you must have seen a, a picture on the screen. I was doing weightlifting. The University of the West Indies Cable Campus has received its highest number of applications for undergraduate and graduate degrees in five years. Principal Professor Eudine Barato made the disclosure as the university held its 2019 matriculation ceremony at the Roy Marshall Teaching Complex. Now almost 1,500 local, regional and international students have begun their new education journey at Cape Hill. Professor Barato commended the new students for taking the vital step. She also told them they have every reason to be excited about the Cape Hill campus. I can confidently state that in being at Cave Hill, you are now within the academic epicenter of higher education in the Eastern Caribbean. Whether you are majoring in English literature, linguistics, history, or philosophy, the campus knows that you are all digital natives who will be spending much of your time on this smart campus which is catering to your educational needs for the 21st century. Well, in his matriculation address, Deputy Speaker of the Bahamas House of Assembly, Donald Saunders, urged the students to keep moving forward. He used his own example of losing a race for political office. Even when I experienced the, the, the defeat in 2007 in the elections, I didn't quit then either. I worked deeper and deeper with my political party and I, I went more, I got more engaged in my legal profession. And then I ran again in 2017. But that, this time I won. Never giving up, never pursuing your goals, never keeping your eyes, taking your eyes off the goal, finding your purpose, and moving forward. Hurricane Dorian has made landfall in the Northwest Bahamas as a monster Category 5 storm with sustained winds of up to 180 miles per hour. 
Officials say it is the strongest hurricane on modern record in the area. The storm has made landfall on Elbow Key and Abaco Islands, and there are reports of widespread devastation. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis has expressed concern that many have not heeded calls to evacuate. I can say that the Marsh Harbor, Harbor, Marsh Harbor area of Abaco, parts of it is already underwater. And some areas you cannot tell the difference as to the beginning of the street versus where the ocean begins. We've had individuals in Grand Key who had refused to move. However, they were subsequently, they've recognized and realized the, the perils they would have experienced and they have subsequently been rescued this morning and are presently on the shores of Grand Bahama. On two previous occasions, I've asked Bahamians to leave the keys from those in West and East End to move to the central aspect of the island. Many had not heed my warning. Many had remained behind. And still there are individuals within the West End area who, had, who still refused to leave. I can only say to them that I hope this is not the last time they will hear my voice. And the Prime Minister maintains that voluntary evacuations will soon no longer be an option in times of disaster. Today we do not have legislation in place for mandatory evacuation. But as I speak, I can assure all Bahamians that upon our return to Parliament, we will introduce legislation for mandatory evacuation. And I would hope that the opposition would concur and support us in this legislation. This is not the time for politics. This is not the time for red or yellow. We must wrap ourselves in one flag.